don't know if they make a motivational cat poster for the expression, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters, but they should. It's a cliche I have heard roughly 802 times while covering sports, but cliches are cliches for a reason, and no team is demonstrating that quite like the Portland Trail Blazers. One of their best players breaks his leg just before the playoffs. The Blazers react by rallying to win eight of their next ten. The Blazers draw the Thunder in the first round, a matchup they were decidedly not favored in. Not only did Vegas pick OKC, 19 of our 20 NBA experts here at ESPN Guilty. did as well. Guilty. But the Blazers reacted by ignoring the experts, ignoring Russell Westbrook's trash talk, and winning the series in five as Dame Lillard sinks one of the coldest shots of all time. Also in that game, Ennis Cantor separated his shoulder, which is not what you want when you're already down a big man, and really not what you want when you are about to face Denver's Nikola Jokic. But Cantor has reacted by going out and playing as if he wasn't hurt at all, despite the obvious pain and hours of treatment. And all of that, all of it, pales in comparison to something that happened last week. On one of the team's off days, player development coach John Yim was driving a car that crashed into a semi-truck. Fortunately, no one died, but Yim's injuries were severe. According to The Athletic, Yim suffered a broken neck, broken leg, a broken hand, a collapsed lung, and a concussion. He's required two surgeries already, and of course, the whole organization has been extremely worried about him. And here is how they reacted for last night's game, too. The coaching staff wore bow ties in honor of Yim, who himself had a fun tradition of wearing bow ties on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And the players dedicated their game to him, promising to be as resilient as their coach. And they were, even when it was clear it was not going to be a beautiful night of basketball. Mm. Denver shooters could not hit the broad side of a barn in the first half. Ooh, and then Tory Craig got hit in the nose mm. and gushed blood Ugh. all over, mm. well, everything. Mm. Ugh. On Portland's side, Damian Lillard in particular had an off night, which basically means he was average instead of spectacular. He came back human. But Cantor played one of the better defensive games of his career. Rodney Hood played one of his best games, period. And C.J. McCollum was frankly marvelous. Check this from the third quarter. We see you, C.J., all right. Hmm. Woo. And then in the fourth, when the Nuggets were making a run to get within seven, McCollum again, grabbing a rebound, stepping out, delivering the three, and giving Portland back its breathing room. And now the series is tied 1-1, and the Blazers get to go home. You know, it's funny. Some teams cover their practice facilities in motivational signs and slogans. The Blazers don't need to bother with all that. They can just look at the game tape and the way they keep reacting over and over and over again. So, Tracy, do you think the Blazers have taken control of this series with what they did last night, and can they keep it? Well, anytime you go on the road for the first two games of a series and you still you, you split, obviously you take back home court advantage. Um, yeah, I think they take, have taken control of this series. Mm -hmm. If you look at the last game that the Blazers have played on their home court and what <laughs> Dane was able to do in hitting that game winner, I mean, these guys are super confident at playing at home. Um, last night was a greedy game that they, they pulled out where their best player didn't have the best game. Rodney Hood stepped up, and I'm looking at him as a guy. He, ha he, he shows so much potential. And then some games, you're like, where is this guy? Definitely. But last night was one of those guys where he was needed and he stepped up to the challenge. Uh, they got great contributions from Miles Leonard off the bench, playing great defense. And it's Kent. I have to give a lot of credit to uh, the GM, Neil, Neil, O'Shea. Neil O'Shea. I mean, a lot of these, these GMs midseason, when they make changes like this for a team, um, this pickup was so great for them. It was, right? It was. <laughs> so he, he, you know, he didn't get that much playing time in, in New York, and then you come to a situation where you think you're going to back up Nurkic. Well, he gets hurt. Now you're thrown into the fire to really carry some big shoes, and he has, I mean, over-exceeded those expectations, and I, I can't be more proud for him and what he's uh, contributed to this team. He really has. It's been, I mean, it's been incredible. And, and the reason everybody picked OKC was because Nurkic was out, and we thought that was going to be a death note. The resiliency of this team is, mm -hmm. is really astonishing. And they, you know, the, Denver shot so poorly last night. And some of those were wide open shots. But I thought they did a great job on Jokic, uh, Rach. I thought yeah. they did a great job of sort of blitzing him and surrounding him and making things a lot more difficult for him. And uh, I still, I'm not ready to say that, well, now Portland is in total command of this series because it, 
it just feels to me like it's just going to be one of these real dirt It's got to go back and you know, forth. Right? It's, it's going to be a rock fight, I guess, is what my dad <laughs> used to call it. But, I mean, you got to feel good if you're Portland, you know, to steal one on their court and then go back. Oh, absolutely, there. especially yeah. because they had a horrible road record, mm -hmm. as yes. we know. Yes, so. yeah, and, and Portland is in particular a tough place to play. I love the Canner story yeah. because, remember, I mean, you can go back even further from his time in New York. Go back to Oklahoma City, that very famous shot of Billy Donovan Billy on the Donovan, bench. Right. Can't play Cantor, right? You could see him mouthing because they felt like his defense mm -hmm. was Pick so shoddy, right? Uh, look, players get better in this league, and the players who work at it and really want to admit what they don't do well, and then we see guys who can't shoot, quote unquote, which always cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Can't skate in the NHL. You're in the NHL. <laughs> can't shoot. You're in the NBA. You can shoot. Well, just can't well, shoot the way. Wallace. He really could. <laughs> can't shoot Wallace. the way you were talking about to a high level right. shooter. But yes, we have seen guys, even LeBron James, improve and work mm -hmm. on his shot. Ennis Kanter, buckled down, has worked on a bunch of different facets of his game. I love last week when he put on his Instagram, can play Cantor, right. which was very good. Cool. And we saw last night, is he going to be Rudy Gobert? No. Did he do very, very impressive interior defensive mm -hmm. work on one of the best players in the game? He did. And I'm always impressed when we see that kind of mm -hmm. progress. Plus, like I'm that. just, I'm a big fan of rebounding. And he, he's one of the best offensive yes, rebounders I've ever seen in my life. Yes. And, although, and those are hustle. Like in, in a tight game like this in a seven game series, a big offensive rebound, it lifts your team in right. so many ways. And remember the possession that uh, poor, uh, uh, Denver had at the end of the game where they just they tipped it, I don't know what, five or six times, and they could have given in. They even ended up getting a possession out of that. Yeah. But it was so deflating. Yes. It's so offensive rebounds to me are they're like steals. It's it's a really big lift for your team. Yeah. And Denver did actually get a boatload of offensive they did. rebounds. But, last but they were night, all those tips. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Yes, but <laughs> I just think that's quarter. a misleading stat because so yeah, many a lot of them of were tips. tips. Yeah. 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 